When you see me demonstrating servo installation on points, you're used to seeing me fitting the servo to some aluminium channel for underside fitting. But I've had quite a few people ask me about surface mounting points. So I thought it'd be a good time to shoot a video. This is my little test track and I don't want anything underneath it. So I'm going to fit a servo. Now this will apply to the standard 9 gram type servo such as this. This is the HK15178. But I saw these on the Hobby King site. They're quite a bit smaller. And I thought, well, let's give them a go. See if they're any good. So what I'll do to fit this, I could either fit it this way with the arm up and out, or I could put a little bit of balsa wood underneath, like so, and then attach it like this with the arm at the bottom. So it would effectively be this way up. I think that looks pretty nifty, so we'll do that. Now the first thing I notice, whoops, let's bring you back into focus. The first thing I notice is the arm's too long, so I'm gonna nip it back to the first hole, I'm keeping the first hole intact, the innermost. There we go. I'll just tidy this up a little bit. And I'm hoping it's not too long to operate. No, it just clears nicely. Let's hold something flat up, there you go. So you can see it working, just clearing the baseboard. So I've got some 0.6 mil piano wire here. And this is an engage layout. I've left the spring in. And I'm gonna bend the end slightly. Let's bring this in, focus. So I'm going to bend the end about four millimeters, maybe three mil. I think that's nearer three. Just so that it clips under the tie bar. And I can operate the points like so. And then I'll put a Z bend in here. Where do you think? Somewhere about this distance. So I'll put a Z there. Let's pop this out a second. From there, a Z here. And let's measure that again. In this case, because it's a test board, not really critical. So I'm going to bend this to the right. So I've got a bit of a bend. Line that up. It's a bit perpendicular. And then I'll take it back. Like so. You can buy Z bend pliers, but really that's all it is. And then I'll nip the end. So this is what I've ended up with. Let's bring it into focus. That will go through the servo and the end here will go through the tie bar on the points. Just make sure this is perpendicular so we don't put any strain on the servo. Brilliant. So if I take this through the servo like so I can pop the other end through the tie bar. There we go. And I think we've got something that looks quite good. Even if it isn't secured. So I've got a servo controller just out of view. Uh, I want you to be able to see what's happening So with the points. So let's attach a, an extension cable. Turn on, go into programming mode, and when I plug the servo in, it's roughly centered. It's reasonably centered. So the base for the servo is a bit of balsa wood, and it's approximately non-critical. 5.1 millimeters, so five or six millimeters is enough. But if you've got seven, use it. So what I'm gonna do is attach that to the servo, I'll take the sticky label off. Am I still in shot? Yes, I am. Get that label off somehow. I have a thick uh, super glue, cyano. So what I'm gonna do is prepare the servo 
by attaching the uh, the balsa base to it. And I'll use the tried and tested method of two to three drops on the base of the servo and it's down. And whilst it does appear to be permanent, um, if you run a flat um, Stanley knife on the edge, it will come off cleanly and uh, doesn't make a mess. So I regard it as permanent until I want to remove it. Oops, there we go. Let's get that on there. Plug it in. Perfect. So there's my servo, sort of glued. I think that's taken. The stresses aren't outrageous, so I don't have to worry too much, and that'll do for this demo. So here's my little arm. Let's attach that through the servo. And through the point the uh, tight bar, there we go, somewhere in the middle I'm going with about there, of course there's a little bit of play in it so I think what I'll do at that point is um, glue it up a couple more drops of my favourite juice Servo horn looks to be in the middle. A couple of drops about here. There we go. Hold it down with the blades, not touching either. Give it 10 or 20 seconds, I think that'll do. Perfect, I hope. So I'll leave that for a minute to uh, dry off and then we'll see what we end up with. Okay, a few seconds have elapsed, like a minute. My blades are in the center. I'm going to connect my servo controller to the servo. Ah, before I do, let's get it into programming mode on the right channel. So we're roughly centered. And let's give it a little bit of adjustment over one way, over the other, and we're done. So now when I flick the switch, perfect. Oh, how nice is that? Clean, simple, and quiet. Let me zoom in, you can have another look. Hopefully we're on the money. With the servo controllers now, half a second after it's finished moving, it stops the pulses and the servo goes quiet. Let me shoot that from another angle. So here we are against the track, hopefully you can see it all working, one way and the other. That's a really simple surface mounted servo and it's going to be great for what I want, so underneath this baseboard uh, there's nothing to break. Nice and simple. I also showed you before this linear servo. So let's see this operating as well. Are we in the shot? Yes, we are, there we go. So I've attached it with four small one millimeter screws to the baseboard. And in this case, it's a double O set of points. And like all these small servos, they come with what's called, here we go, the micro JST connector which requires a little adapter cable. And pretty soon I'll have them up on the website because I have a few thousand of them on order so that you don't have to modify them. You can just plug them in and get a servo lead out. So let's go back to programming mode and connect the little guy. Let's move it over. There we are, touching the blade, and the opposite way, touching the blade, 
and now when I power it there's your linear servo moving you can see the blades making contact here and moving back and then again half a second after it's moved it goes silent so I now have a test multi-panel wired to each of the points and if I press button 3 you see the points move let's press it again one way and the other and if I do the same for the points at the far end and on channel 1 I've attached a semaphore I thought it wouldn't be fair to shoot a video without letting you see the end result. So I've added a few more bits now. I've got a loco on the track, I've got a test multi-panel driving the points and the semaphore. So if I bring my loco up, um, let's have some lights and sound. The sound's there for a reason, it's I want you to hear this. If you see the semaphore, it's at stop and I have my points here uh, two and three let's press it from here so you can see it hooked up and working fine number one is the semaphore watch the loco I won't touch the controller as I bring the semaphore to clear the loco takes off on its own First we'll come around the outside. Let's change the points. And we'll go on the inside. And now I'll bring the semaphore to danger. And the low coast stops. Thanks for watching.